Hey, welcome back to Damper Golf Instruction. Today we're going to talk about uh, some secrets of the putting stroke and just some really simple ideas uh, that can help you make a whole lot more putts. All right, so make sure you subscribe. Uh, hit the little bell when you subscribe. That's why you get all our new videos. We appreciate all the support that you give us. And I think you'll really like this video. If you struggle with putting, this should really make things a whole lot simpler for you. Uh, it gives you a tangible way to measure your success or if you need to get better. All right, what I see people struggle most with is the idea of lag putting, or basically having longer putts, hitting it closer to the hole. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna cover is what you should do with lag putting to make it a whole lot simpler for you. So from here, from the hole to my golf ball, it is basically five paces or 15 yards, right? So simply all you're gonna to do to start off with is you are just gonna pace off how far your ball is from the hole. Just a, a simple pace, a simple step, all right? And I want you to do this on the putting green before you go out and play, all right? So you can start to judge different distances. So I typically have my players start at 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So after they've paced it out, I have them hit three balls from 10, all right, the first ball needs to go a little bit past the hole, the second ball needs to go a little bit short, and the third one is their attempt to either have perfect speed or hit it right in the hole. Once they're able to do that, I have them move back to 15, and then it goes all the way through to the back. Once they've completed all those, they should have pretty good idea of how fast the greens are or how big the putting stroke should be. All right, we measure everything else pretty much from 50 yards out with our with our little scopes, things like that. So we might as well start measuring when it comes to putting as well. So after you've completed all those steps, I want you to keep those tees that you probably put in the ground. Hopefully you put it there to remind you where the distances are. I want you to hit one ball from each spot, right? And I want you to gauge how good your speed is. Kind of start making them a little random. I just want one ball from those spots, okay? So we're trying to make it a little bit more like what you'd see on the golf course, all right? We don't typically get to hit three balls, and by the third ball, we typically have a great idea how fast it is. On the golf course, you get one ball, all right? So when you start practicing before you play, if you're not doing that short or long, short middles kind of goal, you're just gonna putt with one golf ball. That way, you really have to concentrate every time, and it just makes a whole lot simpler. Another quick tip, is if you're on the putting green and you're putting from like, let's say 50 paces away, I hope you're not, I hope you don't do that because if you're hitting it from 50 paces away, sometimes a three putt is a good one, but that's not exactly a great one you wanna practice, right? We don't want you to ever three foot from like, let's say 25 feet away, unless it's a crazy break or it's really up and down type stuff. Try to find something that's halfway reasonable, halfway flat, that way you can produce those strokes and produce those distances more often. Because if you get rid of three putting, your strokes, your score will drop drastically. I think the best average on tour right now is they average around 27 and a half putts around. I know most of us probably average 36 or above. All right, so we covered lag putting, some ways for you to practice. Here's another way for you to practice, all right? So this is our second tip, uh, second little trick to help you get better at lag putting, because really, two putting is the goal for everybody, and if you sneak into one putt, I mean, that's just gonna make you so much better at golf. So what I want you to do is I want you to take three practice strokes. Uh, I personally do it next to the ball. You can do it behind the ball. Wherever you do it, it needs to be the same same spot every time all right so we're talking about routine here routine is huge for putting because once you start let's say you're about ready for the first time ever to break 80 and you started to think a whole lot about the last two holes and you just three putted the last hole because all you're doing was thinking rather than just relying on your routine so make sure you make a good routine so this is what i found was best off uh, all the reading that i've done is that you're going to take three practice strokes i'm going to do it right next to the ball Right? And I'm gonna take two of those strokes while looking at the hole the whole time. And then my third one, I just try to copy it. All right, so it's gonna be continuous. Right? And I just try to really feel it in my hands. All right, then from there, what you're going to do is 
I want you, and this is for practice screen, you can probably see Jordan Spieth, he used to do this, I don't know if he does anymore. You're gonna hit your putt, all right, while looking at the hole the whole time. All right, so, that is another great way for you to focus on the target rather than what your stroke looks like and practice what it feels like versus what it looks like when you're looking at the, at the golf club. Because if you start looking at the club and it looks kind of wavy, this is going to be a whole lot harder for you to hit good putts because you're thinking too much, you're not reacting. Every other sport, we look at the hoop, we look at the baseball as it comes towards us. All right, so this is a good way for you to practice, again, focusing on the target rather than what the stroke looks like, anything else like that. All right, our third secret is we're gonna go through uh, what it looks like, how to set up. All right, there's basically four steps. This is how I teach it. Uh, I didn't come up with the four steps. Uh, I can't remember the guy who did. I'll put the link down at the bottom. He has a book. I think he has a uh, like a website for it too. All right, so step one, you're just gonna hold the club and let it droop a little bit in your hands. Step two is you're gonna pull the club Towards your sternum, your elbows are going to go down a little bit rather than out, all right? And step three, you're gonna pull your shoulders up, roll them down and back, all right? You gotta keep those steps engaged. And step four, you're just gonna hinge straight from your hip. I see a lot of mistakes where people just drop the club down, all right? It's gotta stay right at your sternum about the same distance, and you're gonna bend over, all right? For a lot of people, that's going to feel like they've been bending over way more than they ever have before, all right? And that is fine. One thing when you bend over that much is it helps you get the read a whole lot better. If you're standing straight up, I see a lot of people tuck their head and look like that at it, right? Which leaves their shoulders and all their positions all kind of messed up, right? So this way they have to tuck their chin underneath and look at the read. And so that makes it a whole lot easier for you to read putts because you might have a really good stroke, but if you can't read a green or you're aimed in the wrong spot, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so go through those four steps. All right, we've covered two ways so far on how to improve your lag putting. Uh, now we'll talk a little bit about more of the stroke and some things that you can do, some of those secrets. All right, another secret is you have to maintain basically the frame that you start off with. So if you're in those four positions and you got a really good frame, but I see a lot of elbows kind of going like that, all right, we're gonna have a lot of issues. So a really simple drill that you can do to help you hit the ball better or make more putts is you can either take your right hand on top and lock it into your elbow right here and so you're gonna maintain that same frame or you're gonna lock it into your left elbow and take that same frame uh, another really good way for you to make sure you maintain the frame is to feel what the correct stroke should feel like so if we go back to those strokes and we go one two in shoulders down for three all right your putting stroke, if you can feel like your elbows are kind of tucked to your side, right? if it's going right around your spine, you're going to have that nice little arc. right? So from here, it's just going to be a nice little arc, and then you bend over. Because we want to keep that frame as much as you can when you're putting, because if you're going to do it, you're going to make a whole lot more putts. So there's a lot of golfers out there who think the reason they don't make putts is they don't know how to really read greens. All right, so here's a little trip. Uh, right now we're in Arizona, so we have Bermuda Greens, Florida. A lot of the southern states, all right, more of the southern states are gonna have Bermuda Greens. Uh, if you're more up north, you're gonna have either probably a, some sort of type of bent or maybe Poana, all right? But this is a tip when it comes to Bermuda Greens. If you look at the cup, like unfortunately you probably can't see it in the video, but the bottom edge right here is all burnt out, okay? That means the grain is running that way. All right, so from where the camera is, it's running downhill and it's running a little bit to the right of the camera. Now that's a really easy way because the grain in these greens, it makes a difference. It's gonna push the ball a little bit one way or it might make a putt uphill slower, but downhill slower. So make sure you kind of read where the grain is uh, when you're putting. Uh, I think a little bit more of like true Bermuda greens, maybe like the Florida or the Texas, uh, they say it tends to follow the sun a little bit. I haven't found that as much. I really just look at the cup before I hit a putt just to make sure that my read on the grain is correct. Another thing that you can do is always look for the high point. As you're walking up to the green or driving up to the green, look for the high point of the green, all right? Because we know it's gonna break away from there. 
Uh, greens are usually also wherever there, if there's a bunker, right? It usually is going to roll away from the bunker. Uh, that's just a, a kind of a course design type idea, just to help with drainage, stuff like that. Everything is all about drainage, right? We don't want water sitting on the green. So just kind of think about how the water drains, look at the cup, right? And then of course, sometimes it's just flat obvious. And then if you don't see anything, it looks like it's dead straight, not very uphill or downhill, just hit it at the hole. Don't make it too complicated. All right, we're just gonna make this my final tip because I could go on these things for hours because I struggled with putting for the longest time. And once I found out some of these ideas, especially this one, this is the big one for me that changed everything, is I want your stroke to be smaller, shorter, whatever you want to describe it, and faster, all right? So I want you to get out a metronome on your camera, all right? I use this just a free app called Pro Metronome, all right? And I set the beats to, uh, I think it's one to one, and it's uh, 96 beats per, I don't know, per minute, per second. I don't, I can't remember what it is. All right, it's, it's very fast, all right? Uh, Tiger's somewhere around 96, 98. Pretty much everybody's that way, except if you look at like Aaron Badley, who led the tour for a while. He was like 126, so his stroke was very fast, all right? Every stroke, all right, don't miss this point. Every stroke should take around a second. Some people will disagree. Uh, some people think it should be a little bit longer, but I really, everything around us should take around a second. Uh, this is a little bit harder when the greens are slower, but if the greens are fast, this is so simple because the stroke is so small, the face doesn't have a chance to rotate a lot, and you'll make a bunch of putts. So get out your metronome, all right? The first beat is when you take the putter back. The second beat is when you hit the putt. I think I did a video on this in the past. I'll put a link up there in the corner, all right? But if you can make your stroke small, reduces face rotation and makes everything so much easier. You're gonna make so many more putts if you can keep your stroke small, fast, and with about a minute, all right? If, if, there's, if you're not quite sure where this kind of falls in, I'll put another link up top for a blast motion putting. If you time your stroke, backstroke, into impact, speed, loft change, basically everything that you need to get that stroke. So if you can start getting that stroke within a minute, or sorry, within a second for every distance, Lag putting is going to get better. You're going to make a lot of small putts. Uh, your misses will be really close to going in all the time. So that's why we talk so much about keeping your frame, right? Because the stroke is going to be so small. And keeping that stroke nice and small, nice and quick. For a lot of you, this is going to feel, feel so much faster than what you're used to. All right, you just have to kind of get used to it. So when the stroke is smaller, it's okay if you squeeze the putter a little bit tighter. Right, that just makes the face more stable. It's a little bit easier if you're moving your stroke fast to squeeze it a little bit harder. It's also a better way to make sure that your lag putting is better. Is if you squeeze it hard, it's easy to squeeze it hard the entire time. If you start really light as a feather, usually on lag putts, you tend to squeeze it at the bottom. It causes the club to either jump, slow down, all that kind of stuff. So small stroke right, keeps the face with less rotation. All right makes our distances become a lot more consistent. All right, so here's just some simple tips. Uh, if you have some more questions about putting, make sure you leave some comments in the, uh, down below and I can make a video if there's something, if you're having struggling, or you're struggling with some sort of concept with putting. Uh, I really always like to help people with putting because I know how frustrating it is when you can't make anything. 